How did they do that? Hello and welcome to a new episode of the How Did They Do That series. Today we are going to take a look on an effect called motion tracking. And you can find this in nearly each movie which is out there. And what this effect basically does is it combines some elements which are sometimes computer generated or just some footage filmed in front of a green screen and combines it with a different footage clip and makes it look like both of the elements always belonged together. And you can see this in many, many movies like this one here. Or this one. Or maybe in this one. Which is one of my last projects. And as many of you asked me to do a tutorial on how I integrated these small figures into the handheld DSLR footage. Let's just do this. So here in After Effects you can see that I have already brought out some footage where there's no figure sitting in the background. And what I want to do now I want to position me sitting over here. And for that I have a green screen clip. Let's just bring this into a new composition. And now let's quickly key out the green by using key light. And I do this not that detailed because this tutorial isn't about keying, it's about motion tracking. So I just bring out key light. And what I always do, I duplicate the layer and just apply key light to the buff layer. Take the green color and set it to screen matte. Clip the black, clip the white. Okay. And now I just use this as a track mat. So I choose Luma mat. And now all the white pixels are visible and all the black pixels aren't visible. And I just bring out mask here. And there we have it. And a small tip, what I sometimes do, because you can see all this green spill inside there. And what I found out is that the spill suppression of key light is quite good. So how can we use that? Let's just create a new solid and make it about nice green screen color and make it as a background. And now let's just pre-compose all of this by layer pre-compose and it's all the way down here. Just call it spill, spill removing and click OK. And if we now once again take the key light here and just take this color and now it really has just one green color and nothing more to key out. So if we click on it, all of the green should disappear. And now just the spill suppression of key light should work. And there we have it. Let's just take a quick look. This is the final result with the spill suppression and the intermediate result should be without. So you can see a lot of green and without any green. So, but that was just a quick tip. Quick way to get rid of the green spill. So now we just rename this composition into sitting. Okay. And we can close it. 
And now we have our background plate once again and bring out this sitting composition. And I can scale it down by hitting the S key for scale and just bring it in position. We scale it more, rotate it a bit. Just hit the R key for rotation or W and then you can rotate directly in the frame. And this looks quite nice, but we are not finished. Although it looks like we are finished, but this is really just this point in time. Let me just bring a mark out here. But if I now scrub through this, you can see that it's not sticking to, to the footage. We don't get the movement, the rotation, and also, as you can see, I am far away from the sitting position and now I get closer with the camera. And so I also need some scale information. So how can we do that? And the keyword here is motion tracking. We have to track this information of scale, rotation and position of all of this and bring it onto this sitting layer. And for that, After Effects has something very special. Because when you buy After Effects, you automatically get the Mocha Motion Tracker with it. And I'm not quite sure if all of you know this, but if you have After Effects, you also do have Mocha. So let me quickly open it up. And if you didn't knew it, just search on your computer, Mocha will be there. And this is what Mocha looks like. And what do we have to do here? At first we have to bring in a new file. So let's click on File, New Project, and we have to import a clip. And we want to drag the motion out of this background plate. So I just open up this background plate. And there we have it. And all the default settings should be fine. You just sh should be aware to have the same frame rate, but it normally automatically does it for you. And it also should be the same frame rate like you were using in After Effects. And everything looks fine, so we click OK. And there we have it, we have our timeline. We can scrub through the timeline. And what we want here is we want to track the motion. And the best thing is to track the points in the frame where you later on want to connect your other elements to. So in this case, I want this small figure sitting over here. So I'm going to track about this part of the frame. And the nice thing about Mocha is that you can create splines to define an area which should be tracked. And Mocha is looking for all of those pixels, all the information in, in there and automatically creates scale, rotation, perspective, and all this information for us. So let's get started. To get actually started, we have to create a spline around this area. And we can do this with this Create X Spline Layer tool. And you can just click on the area you want to track. And for me, it's going to be this area here and if you make a right click you can close the spline and you can go to these handles here and adjust your spline and you can make them more round or less by just dragging in those handles here. Okay and for a simple motion track there's really not much more to do except of going to the first frame where we are already and we have our normal player buttons here and we have the tracker buttons over here. So we have track to next frame and track forward. And for that, I simply click track forward and let's see what Mocha is doing. And as you see, it's calculating the frames and 
the shape is sticked to this position. And you can also see that nearly the whole of the spline is outside of the frame, but Mocha still has enough information stored for us so that even this isn't a problem for the tracker. And this is what makes Mocha such a powerful tool. And you can see that this really takes some time, so let me quickly skip this step. Okay, the track has been finished. And it looks like the spline is sticked quite nice to the footage. And it took me about five minutes to track all of this now. And I have to tell you that it's 30 frames a second and full HD resolution. Okay. Another important thing you have to know is that you could always pause the tracking and redefine your spline if needed. How can we get this data now into After Effects? And this is also really easy. You just have to go to File, Export, Tracking Data. And we don't want corner pin data, we want transform data. And you don't have to save it if you don't want to, you can just copy to clipboard. And that's it. And let's quickly go back to After Effects. Here we have to go into the first frame again, because all the tracking data starts in the first frame. And let's create a new layer new null object and let's call this one mocha tracking data okay and now we just click edit paste and if we open up the null object now you can see that all of those keyframes were replied but Mocha somehow also imports the anchor point, which we don't need for this specific example. So we can just click on the stopwatch for the anchor point because we don't need it. And now we can just go back to our mark over here because at this point in time, it looks like the guitar player is sitting in the right position. And now we can just connect this sitting layer to a mocker tracking data by just taking the pick whip and make the tracking data the apparent of this layer here. And there we have it. You could also go down here and choose the layer which you want to have as a parent and we want the tracking data. And just make a bit more space here. If I'm going to the beginning beginning now and just quickly make a ramp review. You can see that I am sitting quite nice on this position. Of course we would have to do a bit of color correction and so on, but that's the main part of motion tracking. So now you know about this great effect which is used in nearly each movie. And you cannot just use this to, to integrate figures into your scene. You could also track a big wall or a skyline and bring out some, some wallpapers on the walls. Or for example, if you have a logo in a shot and you don't want it, but the camera is shaking and you don't want to reposition it all manually, you can just track the logo which you have in your shot make a still frame, just get it out there with Photoshop, get it into After Effects and all of the logo has disappeared. Or maybe you want to add your own logo somewhere. So let me just quickly do this. I have my Flow Motion logo over here and let's just bring it down here. Scale it a bit. Rotate it. Okay, there we have it. And let's just also 
connect this to the mocker tracking data. And now this is also sticked to the footage. Okay. And now the first thing you could do to make this look even better is just to turn on motion blur. For both of the layers, you don't need it for the tracking data, but you need it for the whole composition. And now you see it really helps selling the shot. And another thing which I did in my result and which also helps very much is to bring out lens blur and just apply it to the sitting layer. And if you just go here very close, you can now just keyframe the iris radius, which is responsible for how blurry the whole shot is. So if we go down to zero, everything is sharp. And if we bring it up here, it gets blurred out. So what I did is I somehow figured out what it is and always go f forward about 10 frames. And just made this even more convincing. This is still frame with lens blur applied and this is without. You can directly see that it looks quite good like so, but the lens blur really sells the shot. Of course, you would also have to make some more adjustments. You could bring out some curves. And in my final result, I also projected a shadow over here by just copying this layer going down with the saturation and just mask out my foot. So this is it for this episode of how did they do that? And I hope you learned a bit about motion tracking and also start tracking some motion in your next project. And I just have to say that this is how they do that.